I thank God for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Today I'll be talking about the various aspects of prayer. Instead of prayer being something that we do every day, like breathing and eating, it has become like that little glass box, covered box on the wall that says, break in case of emergency. It is true that so often we associate prayer with crises in our lives. Why should we go to God only when we have a crisis on our hands? If we go to God humbly in prayer, he will satisfy our needs. Prayer is the way in which we communicate with God and is an integral link in Christian and spiritual life. When praying, we should open our hearts to God and speak our innermost, innermost thoughts. Be quiet before him and sincerely call out to him. Only then can we gain God's guidance and leadership. If we don't pray, we lose our connection with God. Now, many people think that God doesn't answer their prayers. So what prayers does God listen to? Now I'll read some Bible verses about prayer and how to pray to God from these three aspects and help us find the way to make our prayers to God. The first aspect I'll be talking about is the significance of praying or the importance of prayer. Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 12 says, Then you shall call on me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 to 8, the famous Bible verse. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and who seeks finds. And to him that knocks shall be opened. A verse I would like to emphasize here is John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Prayer is one of the ways in which man cooperates with God. It is a means by which God, which man calls upon God. It is the process in which man is moved by God's spirit. It can be said that those without prayer are like the dead people, devoid without spirit which proves that they lack the faculty to be moved by God. Without prayer, it would be impossible to lead a proper spiritual life, much less keep up with the work of the Holy Spirit. Without prayer, without prayer, it would be impossible to lead a proper spiritual life. To be without prayer is to break off one's relationship with God, and it would be impossible to win God's praise. As a believer in God, the more you pray, the more you are moved by God. As a result, you can very quickly be made perfect by the Holy Spirit. The second aspect, how should we pray to God? Romans chapter 12, verses 12 says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, Continuing instant in prayer. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and th with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. It shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. When praying, you must have a heart that is quiet before God. You must have a sincere heart. You are truly communing and praying with God. You must not deceive God using nice sounding words. Prayer should, end, prayer should center that upon which God wishes to accomplish right now. Ask God to grant you greater enlightenment and bring your actual states and troubles into his presence when you pray. The third and final aspect what kind of prayer does God listen to? Psalms chapter 34, verses 17. The righteous cry, and Jehovah hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. 
When you begin the practice of prayer, first give your heart to God. To every sincere prayer, an answer will come. It may just not come as you desire or at the time you look for it, but it will come in the way and at the time that will best meet, meet your need. The prayer you look, offer in loneliness, in weariness, in trial, God answers, not always according to your expectations, but always for your good. An example from this quote is the story of Zachariah and Elizabeth. They prayed for a child, but as the years went by, it seems like their prayer wasn't answered. In fact, they even forgot that they prayed for a child. But when the right, when the right time came, God answered their prayer by giving them a son named John the Baptist. Their prayer was not answered in the time they expected or the way they expected, but it was, it was answered in the best suitable time. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as a friend. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. I repeat, prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. We should talk to God as if we are talking to our friends. To a friend, we cannot lie. To a friend, we speak heart to heart. We should, convey our, we should convey our lives and every thought to God. For example, if we want to do some evil, which we know we should not, we should go to him and tell him, my heart is planning to do evil. Please help me, Lord, to overcome this. This is how we should pray. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. This is an, another important quote, many important quote on prayer. Many people think that by prayer, we can bring God down to us. But by prayer, God takes us from these earthly filled thoughts, from these earthly filled things to heavenly thoughts. That's why God said, don't ask what you want to eat or dress or all these earthly things. He knows that we need all these things and he will surely give them. But when you pray to God, speak open-hearted, like you are talking to a friend. Prayer elevates us to God. In the thought of prayer, I would like to sing a song. Did you ever talk to God above? Tell him that you need a friend to love. Pray in Jesus' name, believing that God answers prayer. Have you told him all your cares and woes? Every tiny little fear he knows. You can know he'll always hear. And he will answer prayer. You can whisper in a crowd to him. You can cry when you're alone to him. You don't have to pray out loud. To him he knows your thoughts. On a lofty mountain peak he's there. In a meadow by the stream he's there. Anywhere on earth you go, he's been there from the start. Find the answer in his word, it's true. You'll be strong because he walks with you. By his faithfulness, he'll change you. To God answers prayer. Mark chapter 11 verses 24 says, Whatever you ask for when you pray, believe that you'll receive them and that you'll have them. You can whisper in a crowd to him. You can cry when you're alone to him. You don't have to pray out loud to him. He knows your thoughts. On a lofty mountain peak, he's there. In a meadow by the stream, he's there. Anywhere on earth you go. He's been there from the start. 
Find the answer in his word. It's true. You'll be strong because he walks with you. By his faithfulness, he'll change you to God answers prayer. Thank you.